You know that feeling you get sort of deep inside your stomach? It's kind of like an urge, it's a hankering, it's a yearning. And I don't know, you might feel it also in your brain. Do you recognize that? That's a craving. I mean, think about it. When you're feeling that feeling, that craving, that urge, it sort of happens, sort of rises up in you, and it might be connected to something in your brain. Does that ever happen to you? I'm Stacy Portugal, and I am a weight loss coach. I help over 40 women who are struggling with losing that last 10 pounds and getting off the diet merry-go-round. So let's kind of go back to our cravings, okay? So cravings could be attached to a couple of different stimuli, one being time of day, which may also be attached to an emotion. So think about every night you're um, kind of hanging out and then all of a sudden you might be feeling a particular emotion. Uh, you might be feeling a little lonely, a little bored, a little anxious, husband's in the other room, kids aren't around. And before you know it, you've just made your way to the pantry. It's like, it's like you're doing it in your sleep, right? A craving may also be caused by simply an emotion um, without being attached to a time of day. In times of great stress, in times of sadness, in times of happiness, in times of joy, in times of gratitude, any emotion can be attached to a craving. Um, it's going to be a little different for all of us. And the third thing that might uh, present itself as a craving is a situational type thing. So a particular time of day that, um, sorry, not a particular time of day, but a situation. So more of like an external cue. So let's say you walk into a grocery store and nowadays when you walk into a grocery store, you essentially walk into their bakery kind of disguised as the produce department. I always get a little chuckle out of that. But you're walking into a grocery store and all of a sudden you smell warm, uh, baked goods and now you just really want something from the bakery or you start looking for the girl who's giving out samples, right? So the three things that might cause a craving and or emotional type eating is time of day, emotions, and then some sort of external cue like the smell of the grocery store, um, you know, you walk into somebody's house and they're baking an apple pie or even like chicken is baking in the oven and it smells so good. And all of a sudden you just, you really want to have some chicken, right? So a craving is not even necessarily, you know, for stuff that's horrible, but most of the time it is, especially when we feel as though we don't have control over our cravings. So let's dig a little deeper into the anatomy of a craving and what this might mean for you. So think of a, cra think of a crave like a wave, like a wave in the ocean. The wave builds and builds just like a craving and then it crests, right? It kind of peaks. And then what happens is it starts to diminish. So the wave builds, it peaks, and then it diminishes. And that's really essentially uh, what a crave is, uh, what a craving is for most of us. Um, and understanding the anatomy of a craving can really help you to, to deal with, with a craving. So when do you find that you're craving foods? Um, is it linked to emotion? Is it linked to something situational? Are you walking into the grocery store or do you go to um, like Costco and there's people who are sampling stuff all over the store and you walk by them and you don't even see them. You may smell them first, right? You can smell that food before you've even walked by. And then all of a sudden you're like, ooh, 
that warm pastry, spinach, phyllo dough sounds really good right now. So it's kind of an external cue can really create a craving. So thinking about what, when you're experiencing cravings, do you recognize anything that I've mentioned uh, so far, such as time of day, emotion, um, situational, sort of those external cues um, that we are all faced with all the time. Some people could see even see a Dunkin' Donuts and get a craving or watch a, a commercial on television and get a craving. I hear those things all the time. So now that we understand the anatomy of a crave, what does that really mean for you? Well, you know, like anything else, once you get a good understanding of whatever it is that you're dealing with, like a craving, it's going to help you to make a big difference in how you approach it. And we're going to really be talking about all these things and more um, during our two night workshop. Uh, it's really done. It's all virtual, just like this. It's about a 30 minute phone call, uh, two nights in a row on December 7th and 8th at 7 p.m. Central, and it'll be done. You can call in so it'll, it's like a conference call. If you prefer video call, you could do video call and turn off your camera, whatever works for you. But people on our email list will be invited to this two-night workshop. It's called Manage Your Mood Without Food, and I'll be doing it with my partner, my partner in crime, Sandy Smith, um, and we are the, the um, coaches of the Lifestyle Masterclass, which is a group coaching experience. We talk every Monday night via conference call and comes with a whole bunch of great things. But um, Sandy and I will be uh, leading this call for two evenings, and we're really going to dig a little deeper into emotional eating, stress eating, happiness eating, whatever you want to call it and how we can sort of navigate those waters a little bit more successfully. And one of which will be to understand our cravings and we'll talk more about the anatomy of a craving. So thanks for joining in today, guys. All you gotta do is click the link in this post if you would like to make sure that you're on that email list and you are invited to manage your mood without food. Have a great Wednesday, I'll see you next time.